Hey guys, I am outside on my little patio. We just put this table together and I am in love with this. This is where I start my morning after yoga. I eat breakfast out here. I just had my post workout meal out here. It is so nice. It's November 7th. It is November 7th and it is the most beautiful time in Florida. Maybe like Maybe not. It's getting to the most beautiful time in Florida where it's like cooling down every day. It's like every day is so freaking perfect. But I want to talk. I just want to fill you in. And I'm about, I'm going to get vulnerable and I'm going to be really super honest. But I always am. So let's just begin. I'm going to try not to make this like a really long talk, but I talk a lot. So, and my camera's only at 13% battery. So I'm just going to speed this up. So, I am gonna start by talking about this weekend. My mother-in-law is in town. Um, she's Italian from Long Island and she loves wine. I love wine. Wine is everywhere. <sighs> wine is a really big trigger for me when it comes to, I guess like binge eating. Um, I, I have talked about this a million times on my social media in my captions but if you're someone that doesn't read captions which is totally fine um you might not know that i have suffered from yo-yo dieting and like severe binge eating i would never like make myself get sick or anything but i would eat to the point of wanting to throw up like eating to the point of really feeling ill and like not being able to move like like disgusting I would do that because I would restrict my calories for like extremely restrict like I would have cucumbers and celery for lunch and I would do that because I was going out to dinner to happy hour and I wanted to save my calories but I would go to happy hour and the waitress knew me and she would fill up my glasses of wine like a lot like way bigger than you should ever have and I would probably have a bottle of wine to myself um, at like 5:30 at happy hour and like just keep it going on like a Wednesday and I had like work the next day and I would I would eat oh, I would eat so much at the restaurant and then we would go and because I was getting drunk after dinner I would go get froyo and I would get the, the bigger the biggest cup possible and I mean like my froyo alone was like almost near $20 like it was that heavy and then I would eat that whole froyo and then I would send Brian out to the gas station to get Stacy's pita chips and I would and um in the king size bags of M&Ms and that would happen every Wednesday and then Thursday I would wake up and feel like shit. So Thursday was a shit show. I'd probably go out to eat and get my favorite burger the next day. And then it was Friday. And then Friday I was like happy hour time. And then I would do the same exact thing. And then the weekend I would literally, there, there was weekends where I would stay in bed and eat pastries and donuts. There's a really good donut place here um, called Nanny's Donuts. And they're huge, like the size of my head. And it's a bakery as well. And we would get like six donuts but we would then we would also get like these sweet and savory different pastries and lay in bed for the whole day and just eat or like we would go to like um brunch beforehand and then stop at the pastry place. it was disgusting so the reason why i would binge eat was because i was drinking wine it was all surrounding alcohol and so this weekend my mother-in-law was here there's oh my god we were going to the liquor store and bottles of wine everywhere and snacking on like on little chips and she like just snacks and wine everywhere and going out to eat and wanting to show her all of these really nice restaurants with really great food because i want to show her a great time and i couldn't eat any of it i couldn't i'm sitting outside with them everyone's drinking wine having a good time and i'm watching and I'm, there's, you know, pita chips. P literally, I have them in my, in my cupboard because she brought, bought them pita chips. My downfall. I love them so much. I, oh, it was a hard weekend. So I really had to practice self-control 
because you don't know how badly I wanted to go into my fitness pal, switch around some meals so I could fit in at least one glass of wine. That doesn't sound like an issue, right? It is for me because I have a problem with stopping at one glass. It's better now um, because I don't really drink that much, but in the past, one glass didn't happen. Two glasses didn't happen. I had no self-control. So this weekend, it was my choice to stay completely on track. We went out to dinner to this place where I wanted food so badly, so bad I've never been there before. We went to like this like finer dining, like Japanese place um, that I've always died to go. And they got like this magnificent fried rice and barbecue short ribs and duck tacos, Asian duck tacos, and I had like a spicy tuna roll that I could log. And oh, and it was okay, but it was really, really hard for me. And so when I'm put in those situations where I'm at a family event or one of like a work event or like something, when I go to California to see the Bucci Mastermind and have all that, um, there's always donuts and treats and I, I choose not to have those things and I don't want to make it seem like you're not allowed to when you're dieting because it's really up to you if you want to not diet a hundred percent and you want to give yourself like you know 20% little wiggle room to have things that's fine just be realistic and know that your goals might not be reached as fast as possible but if you're okay with that because you want a life balance that's fine for me though this past weekend I was waiting to hear about the bodybuilding.com spokesmodel search and I made a great video that I'm extremely proud of I've worked so hard on that video I work really hard on my social media to create like a positive space for people um, a motivating positive space and I was finding out if I got this to be a spokesmodel on Sunday Monday so this weekend I took my diet very seriously and I did not have one thing out of my plan I pre-logged everything for the weekend so I knew what I was gonna eat and I stuck to my fitness pal exactly I didn't have anything bad anything off my plan and what I tell myself, like I literally repeat this in my head over and over again, I'm not kidding. I tell myself, what would future Christina think? What would future Christina feel like if I had a glass of wine? If I had whatever I wanted at dinner? If I cheated and just went over my macros and started snacking? How would I feel? How would future me feel waking up the next day or waking up on Monday? How would I feel? And I know that answer because I've been there before so many times. I hate myself when I do that. I am severely like depressed when I do that to myself, when I make poor decisions. And because it's hard, I know that I can't stop at one. It's really hard for me when I start snacking to stop. So it's my choice to not snack or have any wine because I know myself well enough to know that I will overdo it and I will wake up the next day so mad at myself and it will affect my whole week. So I ask myself, how would future Christina feel? And I also tell myself, you are stronger than your cravings. You are stronger than your cravings. So when everybody was outside drinking wine, I had my BCAAs, my snow cone flavor BCAAs, and that satisfied me. When I was done with my BCAAs, do you understand the amount of, I still wanted to eat, I still wanted to drink so bad, but I went inside, I got a piece of gum. Uh, at nighttime when they were just like snacking and I'm, I have all the out of meals and like we're staying up a little bit later because she's here, I would make myself tea and put some stevia in it. Like that's all. So I encourage you, if your goals are very important to you and you're at like a social event or a family event and there's food around, you have two choices. You can say fuck it and eat what you want. You can say, okay, I'm going to just allow myself to have a few things. If I go over whatever, like I'm fine with that. And that's fine. If you're okay with that, if you make that decision and you know you'll be fine if you go over a little bit and you'll just make up for it the next day, then that's great. Or option three is to stay strong and remind yourself of your goals. It's really up to you. Social events and being present with your family does not 
have to be revolving around food. It really doesn't. It doesn't. You're still, I'm, I still spent time with my mother-in-law. I, sp I still spent time with family. And I was, I was present, I was there. I had a great time. So it's not all about food. And that's the point that I really wanna make. So that's how I dealt with this weekend. It was really, really hard. <laughs> it was really hard. But then Monday came around, which was yesterday. Today's Tuesday. Monday came around and that's when I was supposed to find out about the bodybuilding.com spokesmodel search if I was a semi-finalist or not and I am not and I wasn't gonna talk about it at all um but because I didn't want to seem bitter because you know I I'm happy for everybody that got chosen I think everything happens for a reason um and I'm gonna be honest, I was not really okay yesterday. Um, for the whole day, I didn't really talk. I work from home, so I'm alone, but I usually am like singing and I'm on my Insta story all day. I am always have my music on and I'm singing, I'm rapping and <laughs> I am. Um, my dog, I talk to my dog as if she's like a best friend, I'm a loser. I didn't speak like I didn't say words I was like mute I had no emotion I was dead inside that's what I felt like I felt like I was dead inside um, I, don't know. I was I was really really upset that I didn't make it into the semifinals because I worked so hard on that video and I genuinely think that I would be a fucking awesome spokesmodel for bodybuilding.com and another reason why I was upset was because there is this person on YouTube that leaves really mean comments on every single video of mine um, he's a guy and he's mean and I blocked him I, I couldn't figure out how to block him for the longest time but I figured it out I like googled it and figured it out I deleted some of his comments in the past, um, but he commented on my bodybuilding.com spokesmodel search video a couple, like when I put it out, like the minute I put it out. The AC just started, so I hope you can hear me because I like being outside. Um, so he commented on the video and said something along the lines of like, Oh, your your story is just like everybody else's. They're gonna, you're not gonna get chosen. You're, they're gonna find someone way better to pick or to represent bodybuilding.com. Like something, he said something along the lines of like they're gonna find someone way better than you. And yesterday, that's the only thing I could think about was his fucking comment. And I was like. This guy is right. I should be doing better. I am not good enough. My body's maybe not good enough. Um, my content maybe isn't good enough. I The whole day, I was just lost. And I just kept focusing and like hearing his comment over and over again in my head. And I think that's why I was so bothered was because when he sent me that comment, in the in the comment section below I was like fuck you like I can't wait to prove you wrong like I didn't say that but like me and Brian were like fuck this guy like I cannot wait to like get be a semi-finalist like that's how I think I, I literally envision myself with what I want so just long story short yesterday was tough for me uh, failure is hard to deal with I'm gonna be honest uh, during the day like in the morning when i found out i told my mom and my mom was like oh next year and i'm like no I'm, I'm never putting myself out there like that again and i opened up my computer and i started googling restaurants near me restaurants that have either oh i haven't had a burger from a restaurant all year long all year all 2017 i have not had a fucking burger and that's my favorite food so I'm like, I am gonna go fuck this. Like it was Monday, so yesterday. I have my meals packed and like ready to go and everything. My, my fitness pal's all set. My meals are in the fridge and I'm like, fuck that shit. I'm going out to eat. I don't care. I didn't get it, fuck it. 
So I'm legit Googling restaurants, looking at menus and telling myself I'm gonna go fucking binge eat and who fucking cares? Yep. I'm gonna, I'm like, oh, I'm, I'm getting wine, like fuck this. I'm so mad because I had to stay super strong this weekend when Brian's mom was here and I fucking hated it. I was so miserable inside because I wanted to fucking eat and drink everything all for this stupid contest that I didn't get. And so I started to have those bad negative thoughts, like those emotional eating thoughts like I, like I have in the past. And then Brian left for work, I was alone, and I texted him and I'm like, I'm not going out to eat today, no. I like re, I just, I had a weak moment where I wanted to throw it all, all my hard work away. And I can't do that. And I don't want you to do that. Emotional eating doesn't make you feel better. So why do you do it? You know, like me going out to eat. Yeah, it'll be fucking fun as hell while I'm doing it. And then the next morning when I wake up, I'm going to feel and I'm going to feel like a failure because I know I overdo it. I know I do. So I was like, I want, I was going to go out to eat and say, fuck my diet. I was saying I was never going to enter into the bodyline.com spokes funnel search ever again. And I didn't say this to anybody, but in my mind, I was like, I'm not going to compete. I will not step on stage. I'm not going to compete because I must not be good enough. And like, fuck that. Like, no, I'm not going to think like that. So... I'm just, I'm at peace now, but I wanted to share my struggle because emotional eating, stress eating, and impulse eating is a freaking real thing. Like, food really controls us, but I want to help you control food. You control food. Food is not going anywhere. My favorite restaurants are going to be there. I haven't had a burger this whole year. Burgers are still around. Like, they're there, they're, they're everywhere. So, I'm good today. Everything happens for a reason. I was not meant to be the spokes model, and that's fine. God has a different path for me, and whatever happens is just meant to be. So, I just wanna share that with you, because I just wanna be real and show that I'm a real person, and it was hard. This weekend was hard, Monday, yesterday was hard, and this weekend on Saturday, I am gonna go out to eat because I haven't all year long. I've been, at, I've been out to restaurants, but I've tracked everything. I've never ordered something off the menu that I wanted and didn't have macros in the back of my mind for the whole year of 2017. And I'm gonna go out to eat on Saturday. I'm gonna do it. And I'm not going to track my macros either. I will eat light during the day and be smart. And I'm not gonna overdo it on Saturday because I'm in a better mental space. If I went out to eat yesterday, I would have went ham, but I'm not gonna do that because I'm in a better headspace. So Saturday, I'm just going to enjoy what I want in moderation and that's it. So I'll probably vlog again on Saturday to show you how I what I do on Saturday to get ready for my big, not my big, but my restaurant meal that I'm just going to enjoy. I'm going to do legs that day, which I always recommend. Um, and then I'm just going to show, I'll show you on Sunday or Saturday what I eat. Um, but yeah, I hope this helped if you're someone that struggles with emotional eating and stress eating and just being out at like family gatherings or like graduations or stuff like that. Um, you control food. You are stronger than your cravings. Listen to the angel on your shoulder and not the devil. The devil is whispering shit into your ear to try to make you stray from your goals. Knock that shit right off. Listen to that angel. It has a quiet little voice, but it's there. You're stronger than your cravings. You, you are. Emotional eating will not make you feel better. It will make you feel worse, I promise you. So that's it for my little talking session. I know it was long, so I'm so sorry. But I'm going to end this video with a awesome upper body workout that I had this weekend. So good, really high paced, high intensity. Um, I super set a lot of like high intensity movements like kettlebell swings, burpees, things like that to get my heart pumping in between my lifting sets. So I'm gonna start that workout right now. I am gonna do my first ever voiceover for this workout. So this was a heavy back and shoulder workout. 
Every back workout, I do a warm up of assisted pull ups. They just engage my lats and my whole entire back, warm everything up. And I always start with my compound movement, my heavy movement, which is bent over row. I'm only doing five reps here, and every week I work up to heavier weight. So if you can see, my arms are close to my body, shoulder width apart, and I am pulling towards like my waistline, like where my pants are, like my waistline, my, my like lower belly button pull and squeeze. And then right after bent over row, I go into lat pull down four sets of eight reps. Nothing crazy, crazy heavy, but I want eight reps to be hard. And then this is a giant set. So that, which means it's three exercises back to back to back. Second move is the cable rope pullover. I'm obsessed with this move. It engages my lats so well. And then right after that, we do like a cardio type move to get my heart rate up and which we do um, kettlebell swings. I love supersetting kettlebell swings on back and shoulder day just as another workout to get my heart pumping. So it's like almost like hit cardio during my lift. Now is time for landmine row. I love setting up the landmine row. And here I like pulling it to my chest and really squeezing. And I also really love to do drop sets with the landmine. I load it with 10 pound plates and I like to do a triple drop set. So what that means is I just strip the weight three times. So I take a 10 pound plate off three times and just do a total burnout. The last move after the landmine row is renegade rows. Holy crap, these are so hard. Please go light. And like, even if you can only do like two on each side, start there. But these were so much harder than I anticipated. Like, I'm about to go down. Bye. Yeah, done. <laughs> and I'm finishing out my back workout with inverted Smith machine row. I love finishing my back workouts with this. I can't get enough. These are really, really hard to don't underestimate these. And now we're going into shoulders. So I always start with my compound movement. So my very first shoulder move is Smith machine shoulder press, heavy, 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 four sets of five. And then right after the Smith machine, I do dumbbell presses. So these are heavy as well. I'm, tr I'm aiming for eight reps the whole entire time. But if I can't get eight, I will go for six or seven. And I'm going heavy here as well. I'm using 30s and I'm really pushing myself to get a, a full eight reps. And then for my cardio move, I am doing burpees. I, I did 10. Um, I wrote eight to 10 just because burpees are freaking hard. So work on getting 10, but eight at the least. And this incline upright row on the Smith machine, you have to try it. It was amazing. I loved it. I'm going to do this so much more often. This is another giant set. So right after these, I did heavy quarter lateral raises. This is you're picking a dumbbell that is so heavy that you can only go up a quarter of the way and then you do a burnout set with like a semi heavy weight. So don't pick like five pounds, still push yourself and go heavy here and do a burnout set of 10 reps. And then my very last exercise of the day was rear delt plate rows. These are a new favorite of mine. I feel it in my rear delts so much. Pull back with your elbows and it's amazing. They burn so good. I hope you guys liked that workout and that voiceover. I've never done a voiceover over before, but when I was editing my video just now, I hit, I like clicked something on accident and there it was. So if I figure out what I clicked, let me know in the comment section if you like voiceovers. I feel like it's like super helpful. So I can like explain the lifts and some cues to work on. Um, so let me know if you would if you would like that every once in a while for a voiceover. And I'm sorry this video went so long. I'm gonna get better at making them shorter. I just have a lot to say. I feel like a podcast is in my future. But I will see you guys on Saturday and show you what I do to prepare for a night out of freedom because I deserve it. So bye guys. Like, subscribe, and tell me what you would like to see in the comments because when I'm recording myself, it's my life, so I feel like it's so boring. I'm gonna do more meal preps for you, I promise. Those are just really, they're tough for me to film and edit because there's so much that I cook and so much knowledge I wanna bring you guys, but I don't want like a 30 minute video. And I Insta story the whole prep, so those are hard, but I'm gonna find a way 
to like speed it up. Maybe I'll do like voiceovers to that so I can still give you guys information but not make it like a 30 minute cooking show. But comment below with what you would wanna see, just like a day in the life type video, more workouts, more cooking, um, what I eat in a day. Just let me know. So I will see you guys on Saturday. Bye.